All right, everybody, welcome back to Success Chronicles. I'm Mike McKay, and I'm here with Matt Sipiorski from Excel Engineering today. Uh, Matt is a professional engineer in 47 states in Canada, and his degree is from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Uh, so Matt's in charge of Excel Engineering's electrical and low-voltage design divisions. Matt, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit more about Excel itself, the whole company. Yeah, so Excel is an employee-owned, uh, multidisciplinary engineering and architectural firm. We work across the entire United States and Canada, and we are full service. So we've got architects, structural engineers, electrical, mechanical, and plumbing, and civil. And we're proud to make Fond du Lac, Wisconsin our home. We've got 330 engineers, architects, and designers all at our one location. And you know, we've been blessed with a lot of growth over the years. So I. I started in 2016, and since then we've had three building expansions. So, wow. when was Excel founded? So we were founded back in the early 1990s by okay. Gary Runge, a single owner, and then shortly after that he sold 49% of the company back to the employees. And then when he yep. retired back in the mid 2000s, the company became 100% employee owned. Okay, cool. So uh, I think I read somewhere that you guys do more plans submitted to the state than any other engineering firm in Wisconsin. Yeah, that's correct. Um, for the last handful of years, we submit more drawings to the state, state of Wisconsin than anybody else. But then at that same time frame, we maintain a pretty strong presence across the United States as well. And then, like I said, we do follow some industrial clients up to Canada as well. Okay, is that how you guys got into uh, the 47 states, like I see you have a lot of uh, repeat business from your core clients. And are you, like you said, following them around or how did you yeah. expand all over the place? Yeah, so I, I like to say we're a relationship-based firm. So we find a new client, form a good relationship, provide a good service at a great price, and really learn what the client's needs are, what their design standards are, what their expectations are. And it results in most of our work being repeat. So roughly 93% of Excel's work every year is with repeat clients. And, you know, it's, it's something we don't take for granted. Good. Yeah. And, you know, we have talked about looking at opening up other locations, other offices, but with us following a client across the U.S. strategically, it just didn't make sense. Sure. It's, it's not uncommon for us to work with the same client in five different states at one time. Yeah, I mean, just from a business complication standpoint, if you were going to open another office, how would you figure out where? I mean, they're all over the place. How would you figure out where it would make sense to travel from? Yeah, and you know, my my last firm had multiple offices, and you know, there's there's certainly inefficiencies there. Um, one thing that we take a lot of pride in is we do work in the office five days a week. Everybody being under one roof, it lets all the different disciplines get up on a whim and go jump in a conference room, coordinate a mechanical space, meet with yep. the client in person. And also with the significant growth Excel has had, being in person lets us train new employees, help people grow, help people really um, succeed with what they're doing. Yeah, it's awesome. Tell us a little bit about your personal story. Are you a native of Wisconsin or? Yeah, so I was born in Green Bay and then after maybe when I was one or two, my parents moved to Nina. And then around seventh grade, we came over to Fond du Lac. And then in eighth grade, I met my high school sweetheart. So Adriana and I started going out freshman year of high school and then got married shortly after we, oh. college was done. So I'm 39 and we've been together for 24 years, married for 14. <laughs> um, we've got That's four awesome. kids. So That's I have so three annoying. girls that are five, seven, and nine, and then my son's 11. So I'd say if, you know, if I'm not at work, our free time is monopolized with sporting events. Um, you know, my son plays football, basketball, and baseball. My girls do soccer and swim. And then I coach the sixth grade boys basketball team and my daughter's fourth grade basketball, travel basketball team. So we, you know, we, we love, we love the sporting events. It's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of good time with the kids. Yeah. We got the opposite. We have uh, three boys and a girl, although okay. ours are all ours are all grown and finally out uh, on their own in various places. So every every uh, like segment of growing up with your kids has, has its 
benefits and its opportunities and challenges. So that's awesome. So I understand somehow you're a Tar Heel fan, though. Yeah, I, I can't say how it happened. Um, I am a big Packer fan, but when it comes to college sports, you know, back in the day, I don't know where I became a Tar Heel fan, and it's something my wife and I have, you know, she's joined me in that. So we've watched them in multiple different states, and my son too is, and my girls are big fans. And actually, last year we took a trip down to North Carolina. We got to go see a couple of the men's games and one of the girls' games. So that was that was a lot of fun. Good bonding time with my son. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so tell us something uh, about your leadership journey. So where did somebody push you or inspire you? I mean, you haven't been at Excel very long to be a practice director or, I guess, practice leader, What do you, whatever Excel's title is. Yeah, so well, I started out actually at another firm. I interned at another firm back in 2007, joined them for full full time back in 2008, spent my first seven years there. Then it was time to make a change, so I came over to Excel in the summer of 2015. And then almost a year after joining, there's an opportunity to take over the electrical department. So my my current boss and I guess new boss at the time, the president, gave me that opportunity, had confidence that you know he saw something in me. So I took over the group. At that time, there were seven of us within the department. Certainly some onboarding challenges. You know, you just kind of get thrown to the wolves as learning to run manage a group, run people, have Here's to interact. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're Here's interacting. the keys. Good luck. Yep. Yep. So then you got to learn to interact with the other department heads and principals. And you know, I'd say the first year was somewhat challenging. Um, we really focused within our, within our group heavily on reviewing all the department standards, the design deliverable practices to clients, quality checks. And about a year and a half in, we got our first opportunity to really go out and find our own electrical job. So at the time I took over, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing groups were just working for the architects. The architects would go and procure clients, procure projects, and mm-hmm. you know we would serve them on those jobs, work with them sure. to provide a good project for the client. And then you know, t- 2018, we got a chance to go after a pretty large electrical project, ended up winning it. Um, we certainly had a circle of wagons. It was large enough and the schedule was aggressive enough where we brought in four of our seven people within the group were on that job pretty heavily for a few months. And project was a success. Um, at the end of that year, my year end performance review, talking through how, you know, the growth of the department, how things are going. My boss said, all right, you know, it's time for you to go and help grow Excel, start procuring your own projects, go out mm-hmm. there and find some electrical only work. And so. That was something new. I will say I'm I'm not a business development guy. I'm not a salesman. I'm an engineer. (laughs) So it certainly made me uncomfortable, but, um, you know, I was motivated. I was up to the challenge. And so myself and one of the other PMs, we started looking to procure work and it just, it started coming in and that really kind of helped our growth as a department. Yeah. So what do you think your biggest learning has been so far from a leadership, leadership perspective? Um, I think, you know, within the group, with the growth we've had, it's certainly been a challenge of, you know, we started with seven people back in 2015. Now we're at 24 within our department. We have another person started in in about a month. And so that growth is, it's been incredible. It's been a lot of fun, but when you're bringing on that many new people, it's a challenge because our staff, the current staff, they've got to meet deadlines with the clients. They've got to continue to meet expectations. At the same time, they're training and onboarding all these new people. And so I think one of the biggest challenges is just meeting the day-to-day deadlines, not letting standards of quality drop while still, you know, growing everybody else, training all the new staff. Yeah. And you're in a expertise business. So uh, it takes a long time to, you know, get that last 10 to 15% of uh, capability that your senior guys have or your senior women, I don't know what your staff is made up of, but when you bring a new person on, uh, that can cause frustrations for your longer term employees because they know more experience wise and they look at new people with uh, why don't you know this uh, type of attitude, but we're humans. So we don't give ourselves credit for the fact that lots of, uh, especially in what you guys do, which is specialized knowledge, 
lots of the things that you've been able to solve only happen now and then. And so the everyday stuff that your people see, everybody's probably good at, but it's probably, uh, you know, the more new people you have, the more the senior people who've already had all those experiences, but they don't remember it, uh, can be stressed for that from a culture standpoint. So how, how do you manage the culture of your your people and the team that you are growing? I'd say, I mean, Excel as a whole is kind of a work hard, play hard. And so certainly they use some long weeks and long hours with tight deadlines. At the same part as a company, we focus heavily on extracurriculars. So we've got, you know, an annual pool tournament and a bags tournament and different things like that. Yep. Our electrical group will do a boat outing once a year and company Christmas party. So we, we try to do some of that extra stuff just so people get to know each other better outside of work. Sure. But certainly as we've brought on new staff and with some of the challenges over the years, finding qualified people, we've kind of gone outside of hiring just a traditional consultant. So at one point we went and hired an electrical contractor that, you know, spent his whole life in the field, <clears throat> design building and kind of running projects, the same jobs that we were designing. And we brought another person on that was a a lead engineer at the facility. So he was running a you know manufacturing plant. Yep. So you bring these people on that are consultants. They don't know how to run the software. They don't know the code. And even putting together a set of construction drawings is a challenge. And so at times we've had younger staff training these people that have been in the industry for 20 years, but now are kind of new to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. It presents challenges, but at the same time, you know, for us to grow as a company, you've got to bring on new people. You've got to train people. And, you know, just try to maintain that work-life balance. So if we do see a big uptick in work, yeah, you've got to hire new staff, but it's kind of a collective effort to bring them up to speed. You know, the more we've grown over the years too, it opens up opportunities for other people within my group. Sure. So back when we had seven people and we grew to 10 or 11, now I needed a second project manager to run jobs. Well, that person that was just doing power distribution or lighting, now he's got a chance like I did to take on more responsibility to grow himself. And so I'd say that's that's one of my biggest driving factors since the early days of running the group is the more we expand, the more people I can hire, the more opportunities I can open up for my staff for them to grow like I wanted to. Yeah. I mean, do you ever see them not wanting to take the opportunity? Yeah, that's so that's something I learned early on. I remember having a conversation with my boss, you know, the president of Excel and I talked about what I thought was next for an individual and he asked me the question, well, what does he want to do? Yeah. Does he want what you want? And I'm like, you know, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> and so one yeah. of the things I've looked at over the years is not everybody in our group wants to move up that quick or wants to run the company. Some people are perfectly happy just doing what they're doing and maybe they'll be doing it the next 10 years. And that's fine. Right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. I mean, we've we've got a large variety of projects. You know, we might be engineering a half million square foot heavy industrial facility. At the same time, we're designing a Taco Bell or a, a quick trip gas station sure. or something a little simpler. You need people on both ends of, with, you know, that want to do those jobs. So it's it's good to have the people that are motivated, but it's also good to have some of those people that are happy just, you know, providing a quality service with that project that they're doing. I, uh, when I was younger, when I had a regular job, I wanted to be a executive of a billion dollar company before I was 40 years old. And I worked my like ass off. <laughs> we traveled and my wife stayed home with the kids. And when I got promoted, I was talking to my team and they're all like, yeah, that's cool. But we think you're nuts. And I'm like, what? And they're all like, I don't want anything to do with the amount of work that you put into do that and it was a huge lesson for me that not everybody's motivated the same way uh as i am which is what your boss asked you right like are you sure they want uh what will you what you yeah. wanted because you, you got it and one of our challenges is, again as people is we think everybody thinks the way that we do so that's super cool what what's uh like what's your biggest challenge that you've overcome would you say from a leadership standpoint and developing your team or personal yeah, I'd say I, I'd say probably just learning to manage clients. And so early on, as you're trying to chase clients and build the amount of work you're bringing in and try to move up to that next, next level, it's it was very hard to tell a client no. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, you're, you're just happy to have them, right? And of course, sure. we, you know, we are blessed with the repeat clients, but 
sometimes clients might bring unrealistic expectations on when they want the project done or <laughs> you get a bunch only, of yeah you get a bunch sometimes. of last minute you know, <laughs> yeah yeah maybe you. there's a bunch of last minute changes and so it's it's balancing <laughs> the expectations of the clients with the with the deliverable when it needs to be done and um again trying to maintain that work life balance within your team of not pushing them too hard too long so yeah Cool. So if you had to pick three people that had the biggest impact on you on your leadership growth journey, uh, who are they and what would you say to them? Yeah, I'd say probably first would be my wife. My wife. Um, when I was at my last company and studying for my professional en engineering license, I was getting up at 3 a.m. five days a week so I could get to work early and study. And that was three to four months. Wow. And at that time, we had my son who was two and a half and a newborn daughter. And she happened to be really colicky. So she would scream every night from mm -hmm. about nine to 10 o'clock. And Adriana was on her own just because I had to get up at three. And so, you know, that was certainly a huge stepping point in my career to pass that test. And even when I came to Excel and took over the group that first year, I mean, it was 70, 80, even 90 or weeks every now and then just to get through that first year of the transition and having her at home, taking care of the house, taking care of the kids keeping things running there while I was working six, seven days a week was huge. Yeah. So I'd say also probably my boss. I mean, he's the one that gave me the opportunity initially has kind of set high expectations over the years, which I'm one that likes to challenge. And so every time there's an expectation set, I mean, I'm determined to meet it. And then probably, you know, going back to my department. I mean, again, having the growth we've had, having to train all these new people, even our internship program, We'll bring on two or three interns every summer. And so it's a lot of stress on them to meet expectations, meet deadlines, be efficient, right? It's all about efficiency. Sure. And they've got to do that while we continue to grow the group. So, yeah. There's one piece of advice I'd give everybody I inter interview it's uh, make sure that you say thank you to those three people or groups of people. Uh, I grew up, cut my leadership teeth, so to speak, in the Army. And uh, to this day, the guy that had the most impact on my life, I never said thanks when I worked for him. And when I reached out to him a few years later, he had passed away from cancer. So, um, you know, the business world isn't one that practices gratitude and saying thanks to people very often. But uh, when they have it, A, it'll shock them. Um, and B, they deserve it because you're right. You just articulated great things that those three you know, two people and a group of people did for you. So, of course, you don't have to I mean, do anything I say. I would just say it's a regret that I never said thanks to my guys. So, no, I mean, that's a good point because I will say early on running the group, the way I showed gratitude was giving people more responsibility. I mean, if, I, if I've if i got <laughs> someone that's younger yeah. and I think they've really grown or they've really improved their ability or skill set, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to push them, to give them more responsibility. And in my mind, if I'm going to, I'm going to trust you now going to a meeting and running this really critical project on this huge job we're doing. That's my way of showing my confidence. And I did learn early on that that's not enough. You got to, you know, certainly vocalize it as well, but. <laughs> Especially if they don't want to be you. And now you, you know, you terrified them. Something that uh, you, you would be grateful for, right? And they don't want it or they don't feel like they're ready for it. So uh, everybody can be led past those humps but i mean it's good to remember sometimes that th their esp is still not a leadership skill because it doesn't work and uh articulating the pros cons why it's a benefit and gratitude is always useful for people that work for us yeah so no, that's what, a good point what's uh what's the next big thing for you uh next if you look at the one to three years for you and your role and for excel yeah, I think um, probably corporately, you know, just making sure that we've got, we're working on that next generation of leaders. Because as, you know, Excel continues, you've got people looking to retire, you've got to fill those sure. roles. And so from a corporate standpoint, there's been a huge emphasis on project management training, leadership training, identifying that next group of people and trying to get them in the right position to step into those roles. And then probably within our group, just continuing to try to expand our own clientele. And so we're making a big push with industrial facilities on safety. So oh, if you've got electrical yeah. distribution panels, 
you've got to do a, a study on those panels to figure out what kind of what just layman's terms danger there is and then we'll provide a label that tells the client hey if you're going to work on this panel this is the right personal protective equipment you need to wear so that's it's been a big boom lately and it's something we're just looking to continue to pursue yeah i used to run plastics factories and i you just had me the flashback from the <laughs> do we have a, is every panel marked with the right ppe and yep. uh, unfortunately it wasn't in my factories but some friends of mine had fatalities in their uh facilities so it was a little close to home and uh you know as a factory runner those guys were always like, why do we have to do this? I'm like, because you ain't dying. You are not dying while I'm here. So I'll fire well, you before you violate PPE standards and things like that. Yeah, and that's part of that is, you know, you've got staff at these facilities where it's that I have to get it done. I have to get this machine up and running. And yeah, if sh corners are cut. I mean, their yep. lives are at stake. And and we actually, so we did it. One of my guys, one of my PMs made a site visit a few, probably six years ago. Mm -hmm. And we had a piece of equipment that had an arc flash happen and came on site to try to evaluate the situation and the staff was going to open it up and let us look at it live. And certainly he told him, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. In fact, we shouldn't even be near the gear. Right. So when he came back to the office, we made a conscious effort to put together our own arc flash training program, not really as a revenue generator, just as a way for us to help our clients be safe. I mean, yeah. What's the point in us designing a facility for them if they don't have the staff that knows how to operate it safely? So that, that's that been a big point of emphasis for us is the safety side of things. Yeah, that's good. Uh, one last question that I never prep people for, and that is uh, if there was a question you wish, wished that I had asked you, what would that question be? And consider it asked. Boy, that's a <laughs> put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess maybe, maybe leadership style would be one, and or I guess so what, what, what what advice I have for new for people that are trying to do it on their own potentially. And so, Sir, that asked what what advice yeah. do you have for people that are tr trying to do this on their own? I, I'd say it's there's only so many hours in the day, and so if you want to grow your business or you want to expand, you've got to look and hire the right people, bring on the right staff, and then empower them, and so. What I've learned really early on is if I can have other people run the big projects, you know, I can delegate more work. And the more work I can delegate to my staff, the more I can help grow the group. And so I'm always looking to kind of challenge my staff, give them new opportunities. Because again, the more they can take on, the more I can go out and procure and the more different industries we can get into. Yep. All right. Well, Matt Sipiorski from Excel Engineering, thank you for being on the show today. It's great to get a chance to know you a little bit better and, uh, you know, good luck with the big goals for the year. Yeah, appreciate you having me. Thank you.